this time on 818 Custom Garage, part three of the Mini Fraction. Man, this thing is super awesome, having some fun. Now, if you can see, we're hoping to get a lot more runs into this thing this time and hopefully figure out some of the problems we've been having. So, we've got the Typhon um, 17 millimeter hexes, because these cheap eBay ones, I hate the design, and they keep coming loose, and the, the nut's a different weird thread, and I can't find anything to, to get it on. I don't want to have to, like, Loctite them every single time either, so I'm not into that. So I'm like, let's use a tried and true. These work on the 3S, 4S vehicles. Um, they're armor parts, so we'll be able to get replacements easy and all that other stuff if we ever break anything. And super simple. I mean, instead of that axle stub, you use this axle stub. Then you put on the 17 millimeter hexes. Now you can see it's time for power. And this little guy, you know, he's small. I, but I think it's small but mighty. This is a TP Power. Uh, this is a 4030, 3900 KV. So we're keeping the same KV with this motor. Um, this is a 6S capable motor out of this little guy. It's basically, uh, I think it's 40, 4068. So 40 mil can, 68 millimeter length. So a little bit bigger can, you know, diameter can, and then slightly longer. So it should fit in here better. Now I think we're gonna have to do a little modification with the shaft, it may be a little long, I'm hoping not. And then the screws are four mil, I think, so we might have to open up the slots on the motor mount. But uh, we'll figure that out as we go. So follow along, let's see if we can actually make this thing not uh, cog off the line. All right, so first up, these hexes, I'm tired of them. I mean, I don't wanna ruin these wheels, they loosen up, and then you'll just strip out the inside of the plastic on the wheel, and I'm like, these things ain't cheap, these things aren't cheap, you know? They work pretty good so far, but uh, just not a big fan of like this nut thing that goes in there, it's just a weird design. I, the design is fine, just the execution of how they did it, not great, could have been done better. So, we're gonna do, a lot of people have done this before, and this is what I should have just done in the beginning. I had these other ones, they were cheap. Um, this is cheap too, but you gotta use the, um, the Typhon stub. I showed you how to replace the stub on the axle. You replace it with these. So you need two sets of those, right? You gotta do all four. You need the right pins. Um, and you may have a set of these. Honestly, I was like, I wonder if I have these. These are probably the same pins that are already with the other hexes, but I didn't look. So, cause I didn't really pay attention. So bought a set of pins, they're cheap. You need a set of, uh, you know, the 17 millimeter standard wheel nuts. Uh, I just got some black armor ones. And then you need the Typhon um, hexes. So these are specific to this, this axle stub. And these all, this all mounts up to the same um, hubs that we did uh, earlier too. So like the granite, the big rock, um, the Sentin, and the Typhon uh, 3S all use the same steering knuckle and they use the same back hub. So these are the right spacing. So we should be good. So we're gonna slam all those on. I'm not gonna show you how to do it. I showed you how to do it in the last one, right? Uh, we'll slam them on and show you that finished product. Uh, we'll probably take it out for a hit with those on, make sure everything fits good. And then it's time for power. Bang! Came out beautiful. These things look so nice. And they go to better, together better. Honestly, this uses a M3 by 10 countersunk screw. I didn't buy those because I had them already. But, um, you know, and I figured, hey, if I ever screw up a nut, I can buy those. If I ever screw up a, uh, you know, a hex, I can buy, you know, a pair. They come in pairs. So, that, you know, this, there's no replacement parts for this thing. And the way that center screw, you know, nut goes in there, I'm just not a fan. Um, and then they're being coarse thread and they're not, uh, you know, they don't have anything to really hold on to lock the nut on. Uh, that's a bummer. So these all came out super good, super happy with it, super clean, super simple. So um, if anybody wants to know part numbers there, you know, I had them in the video, you know, I had them kind of laid out, you can see them. If not, hit me up, I can probably pull them up and, uh, I'll try to put a link in the description for um, for the parts to do the uh, the GRP. 
this. It's all Arma. It's all Arma parts. And it's all simple. You can buy it all off of Amazon. That's what I did. Uh, you, if you're a Prime member, you can get them in a day or two. And it's super simple. All bolts on. And then if you ever screw anything up, you can get replacements for it really easy. So, really stoked. So next up, it's power time. We're going to try to go fit this uh, TP power motor in there. We've got, you know, we've got our ESC, our 6S ESC in there. Um, so we're gonna pull the module out, pull the module out, see, I have a feeling, like I said, the shaft's a little bit long. I don't know, I think, it, I think it'll probably fit in there. We may have to flip the um, flip the pinion gear around to, to bolt it on, because the flat only goes to right there. You know, it doesn't go all the way in. And then the mounting holes are M4, which is nice, but I believe the mounting holes on that motor are M3. So, um, and then, you know, they have the two slots holding the motors on. So I may have to open up the slots. I don't know. So we're gonna pull it, we'll, we'll get the module out. We'll pull that all out. And uh, once we got that out, we kind of got a better idea. I'll bring it back on because that's boring to watch. All right, so we're back. And we made some discoveries, which I think are cool. Um, like I thought, that is, uh, those are three mil screws that normally mount in there, right? And if you look, the slots just fits a three mil screw. You know, it just fits. You cannot get a four mil to go in there, right? So, I modified the top one so far. I think it came out pretty good. And this one goes right in easily so what i've found is when you've got this thing all mounted up so i've only got the one screw in the top this isn't even the right pinion but it's the only one that will work it's, these arm pinions are always undersized this is a robinson racing but i wanted to just mock everything up right so just kind of what i thought with the slots with that um, flat spot the farthest i can get this thing on with a flat spot is right there so if you look a little bit of offset on the engagement, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem personally. Um, you know, I could always try to machine the flat spot up a little bit longer. I tried to flip it, but then it, it doesn't have enough engagement in the back. So um, it'd be nicer if the flat spot was a little bit longer, but I mean, we're only talking a couple thousand, so um, <clears throat> we're gonna run it. <laughs> now I've gotta go get a Robinson Racing Pinion. Um, and I am going to do a spool in here too, I just don't have it yet. So once we have the spool, we'll get this thing all perfectly set up and um, be good to go. But I'm going to go modify this bottom slot so that we can uh, get this thing all set up. And then I'm going to work on trying to see if I can use that heat sink on this motor. So um, it'd be good to have a fan and heat sink on here because this is just a smooth body, you know. Um, this, this is a 3660, uh, this is a 4068, so 4 mil, um, I, I think they run these on the out, the new Outcast and Creighton Forest, which I think those are, I don't know if they're 36, they're, I don't think they're 36 motors, I feel like they're, I thought they were 40s, so I don't know, I might have to go do a little research there. I like this, the new design that has the little bolt to hold, actually hold it in place compared to the, just the little, um, the other one just slid on, I think, right? On the old version, I think they just slid on. And they didn't even have a, the, the clamp thing. So I know the big 6S stuff has that clamp and same thing as this, so. All right, we're gonna go modify this, get the spool, come back, get it all together, show you what it looks like. We're back. A couple days later, um, we got a few more parts. We're going to show you a few more, a uh, few more things we found on this thing, and um, I think we're in a good, good path uh, to get this all set up and fitting correctly and happy. So uh, we'll show you what's up here. All right. So we got our spool or our what is that? A uh, slipper clutch eliminator, whatever you, everybody wants to call them. I, it's a spool. So 
This one is from Monster Kings off eBay. Looks just like the Hobby Wing one or the Hot Racing one. So um, there's come with a gear. You can get um, tons of different sizes of gears. This is a 47 tooth steel gear. Uh, it is hardened. So these I've used these before on a couple other builds and haven't had an issue with them yet. So we'll see. Um, so the one thing I do replace are the screws that they send. They're always, they're too short. They're too short and then I like using the full head. Um, they get use a button head because I like getting these really tight with Loctite and everything too. So um, I think it comes out pretty good. So really happy there. Got the other uh, hole uh, slotted. So we got both screws in there. This is a 22 tooth Robinson Racing Pinion. Um, I was thinking about trying to do a 20. I have a 20 here, a 24 and a 25. The 20, when with the 47 tooth, just doesn't mesh like fully all the way over. There's too much gap. So uh, if I wanted to run the lowest, it would probably be a 21. So I don't have a 21, but I have a 22. So we're sticking the 22 tooth on. So you got to run with this setup from what I've found so far with the, the, um, flat on the shaft, you know, it doesn't, like we talked about, this is the lowest it'll sit in there, right? With an arm opinion, um, the arm opinions are a little bit thicker down below, so they sit up a little bit further and you get much less engagement. So I'll show you with this, we've got, I think, pretty much perfect engagement. So when this thing is in there, we're lined up good. So I'm happy with that. Um, that's really good. The arm opinions, you know, there's a difference between some of the arm opinions out there too. Like the ones that come factory on these things, they're like a, a cast or something or injection molded vacuum cast or, you know, something along those lines and they work. Um, but there is the hardened steel versions of the armor pinions, which are way nicer. Um, and what's funny is remember I was showing you that the armor ones don't really fit on these shafts. You get a hardened armor version slides right on. So, um, I've noticed that lately with some of the armor pinions, the, the cheap ones. So I always, I always say, go get the hardened versions anyways. You know, you're not gonna, they're only a few bucks more and they're way to, the way to go. So especially like these Robinson racing pinions, love them, use them all the time. Uh, they always fit good. The finish on them is great. Uh, high quality, really good pinion for, uh, for a lot of the like 0.8 mod stuff. A lot of the mod one stuff I've gone to, I'll use the, the, the Robinson racing. If it's a five mil shaft Robinson racing or techno really like there or the hardened armas, but I really like the Robinson racing and the techno. And then when you start getting into the eight mil shaft mod one, mod 1 1.5 scorched man, theirs are super nice. The castle ones are pretty good. Wish they would use a five mil, uh, set screw. And then the other thing, and I also have, uh, these are, this is a Saga, Saga Custom. These are US made too. These are super nice too. Um, this one's actually for our 8S crate over there. So, but when you go to do this too, um, you know, this slipper clutch, right? Has this um, spline shaft built into it for uh, connecting to the drive shaft. You no longer have that there. And um, so the BLX style, like the brushless versions or the, like the granite outcat or granite um, big rock all them they have you know they have a, a nice a much nicer slipper clutch than this thing they use but they use the 57 tooth spur where just this, this is 50 um, but they use this piece slides in there it's just a connection between the slipper and so you got to get one of these so that is the part number if you need it and it's just the slipper shaft so you, if you do do a eliminator or a spool whatever you want to call it you also need one of these so make sure you pick one up they're cheap so we are going to slam the rest of this together well i gotta clean this is all tight together i gotta clean everything all the threads lock tight everything together and then we'll get this whole unit in there um i do need to solder on some bullets so we'll solder on some bullets that'll go right to those. And uh, man, I think we'll be in good shape. So once we got this all, the module all together with the bullets and everything ready to go, 
we'll show you where we're at right before we go to slam it in stay tuned bang check that thing out sorry for the noise um it is hot today so i got fans my ac got other cool stuff getting ready to go man but looks like it was meant for this <laughs> it came out super super clean really happy with it um yeah got the bullets on heat shrink everything fits in there good got the gear mesh set one little tip guys just always remember when you set your gear mesh you know, a lot of people will set it right you need to rotate the spur and you need to rotate it and feel it in it, like all rotation because there are always slight imperfections in some of these gears or unless you're using really 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 nice stuff or if you've got a shaft that's slightly off or something or you know you got plastic here and all that other stuff there's always a tight spot and if you don't set the gear mesh on the tight spot um, you'll be tight in one one area and you could that'll eventually wear and that could end up chipping a tooth and all this other stuff and so I've seen it many times always rotate it um, check your mesh in multiple positions um, and it comes out pretty good so oh like I said that's that little guy just slides in there right? if I can do it one-handed no you get the gist I hope <laughs> there we go so just goes in there and then the drive shaft hook up, hooks up to it and you're good to go so I think we need to get it in here, right? This thing needs to go in there and hook up. So I always say, what's the easiest way to do it? One, two, three, ready. Bang! Check it out. Fits in there great. Man, wires are nice and somewhat tidy. Um, bullets all fit good. Fits kind of how it did with the uh, stock motor. You know, using this 150 amp ESC, I've got everything all wired crappy um if everything works out right i'm gonna eventually just make this a single plug i'll solder it all off single plug and if i need to i'm gonna end up doing a real cap pack on here too probably because um, i think a good cap pack on here will really help this out too so um yeah fits in there clean it is super close to the drive shaft trust me there is space in between right there barely um so if you're going to a smaller spur, right? And still keeping the small, you know, stockish pinion, um, it's going to be real close. If you had a 52 spur and that, you know, it would be out here a little bit, right? Um, and we're probably, you know, I'm going with the, 20, the 22 right now just to see kind of where things are at, but I have a feeling we're going to go up in size. So um, we'll see. I mean, may not be able to go up in size. This thing may just smoke the tires all the time. And then, uh, then we'll probably have to get it together. So, but man, really happy, fits good. Um, you know, this isn't a big, gigantic long can or anything. Uh, I figured this would be a good setup, you know, better than stock, um, fun still. I'm gonna like research what I can do about maybe for a fan on this thing too. So uh, stay tuned for that. So we'll see, cause that stock, uh, you know, the stock setup's too small. And it won't fit on there. So if I could just at least, I don't know. There's gotta be some kind of, and I've, I've used other clamp on mounts. That they just tend to wrap around the motor a little bit more and there's no space underneath the motor and there's no space over here. So, uh, but this thing isn't, I'm kind of setting it up as more of like a couple hit wonder. So we'll see. All right, next up, we're gonna let the lot tight dry and then we're going out to make some hits. So uh, we're gonna fire this bad boy up. I'm gonna show you a couple little things. We're gonna take it out, do a couple hits. So uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's got this, the full scorched um, inner fenders and all that set up to keep a lot of dirt and junk out because these things get full of it. It's very similar to, uh, you have a big one. Y'all have probably seen those. It's a similar setup. Super, super cool. That comes all in one piece. You got to trim them out. They give you the scissors to trim it out and then it all bolts on. I mean, it's really, they're really simple. Work super duper well. Um, this is similar setup. This is all one piece though. 
Um, this is all one piece there and one piece there. Super simple. I uh, love how it fits. Gets a little tight with the GRPs at front, so I may end up having to do a little extra trim here is what I'm thinking. Back, I think it's fine. Um, so, and we fit a fan on here. We'll see how, if it works or not, I don't know. I think I can maybe flip how I mounted it and ro rotate it up possibly. I don't know, I'm gonna look at a couple different options there. Cause like if I change gearing or anything, there's no room for it to move. So, all right. So I got the, I wanna turn it on. We got 4S in there. All right, I got the Sky RC on there too. Um, I don't know if we're gonna use I, I may just do a quick speed run because we know we got it to go 67 before. Um, I don't know if it'll, I mean, technically it's got more gearing. So, because um, it's got a smaller spur and um, you know, we've got a smaller spur this time around. And uh, what else? Oh, way better motor. Let's see, I have a feeling it's still gonna cog though. I don't know why I feel that way. Might be good if I turn the remote on, or the transmitter on. So. Yeah, it still seems a little coggy to me. So we may do a couple little warm up yeah, it's still coggy for sure. Okay, let's uh, should have warmed up the tires a little bit. Let's see if we can get you down. Get this guy out before the cars come. In. There we go. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Oh man, super duper coggy. But uh, once you get on it, man. This motor's asking for a lot of power. Oh, whoa. Okay. And there I kinda, Kind of rolled into it on that one. Right. Let's see if we can get a better one. Three, two, one. All right. Let's see if I'm gonna hook up the Sky RC and see if we can uh, do a little test on it, all right? All right, we're back. And I got the Sky RC on. We're gonna do a, see if we can do a 132 drag hit. I don't know, this might not be long enough, so let's see. Three, two, one, go. Oh! Oh! Wow, that thing got airborne down there. Oh, I totally tweaked the, yeah. the wing. Did this, did this get come from that? No. Oh, it broke that wing out, huh? <laughs> Ripped the wing right out of it. Just, oh, man. Just buy another wing. No, the wing's okay. I can bend that back and I can figure that out. Dang. Yeah. That thing, um, that thing ripped. So let's see if we can see what it did. Man, so that thing went 2.5 or 2.8. I don't remember what it was. 2.5 or 2.8 at like 57. So obviously I wasn't still on it because, uh, man, that thing got airborne. Definitely got a lot of air under the front. There's a big dip down there at the bottom or down at the end. And I, it's off to the right and I shouldn't have let it got off to the right because um, I think it dipped and then air got out of the front. So definitely 
definitely need to figure out um, shocks on the front and rear. So the rear, I think, is squatting too much. So I'll probably do some fuel tube on the rear shocks. Front, I think I'm gonna pull them apart, shim them, uh, put some spacers in on the inside of the body. And um, we'll probably do, uh, that way we can lower the front. And then I've got a front splitter that I'm working on right now too. So if we can get the front lower, stiffen it up, if we can get it lower and then crank down on the springs, get some tension in there. Same in the back, I've got the springs all the way tensioned. So, but if we can do at least fuel tubing on the back, that should limit the, uh, the amount that it um, uh, squats. So that can hopefully help. And then, uh, man, I'll fix that back wing. Um, but hey, let's do a quick speed run. I'm curious if it does uh, any faster. It went 67 last time. Um, you know, we're gonna roll into this. So uh, we definitely got a cogging issue still which I would say is now ESC related. Um, and I think it probably always has been ESC related. I just don't think those ESCs can take uh, that kind of initial hit of power surge, you know, and all the ripple. So uh, let's do a quick speed run and we'll come back, check it out. And then we'll talk about, is this part three? This is part three about what we're gonna do in part four. <laughs> so let me go, uh, I don't know if I can do this really one-handed or not, so. Man, it just wants to light up the tires. Let's see if I can do it. I'm having trouble holding the camera and doing this all together. Ooh. That was a pretty good run, so let's see what it did. Man, so this little monster just went 78. So uh, it's fast. You could definitely do a pretty cool speed run out of this thing, um, the way it sits. Um, but we want, to, we want this thing to be kind of our little drag car. We made up speed running it later on, and uh, we'll see. But um, comment, like, subscribe. We'll, uh, yeah, what did you say? I want to tell you that, can I please ride bikes without a helmet? No, you gotta wear a helmet, bro. But I want to go you. You smashed your face last time? There's no way, bro. Helmets only. Why? Because mom said so, and me too. I want you to get hurt. But can I just wear my daughter's helmet? No, get the other helmet that you have. But there's an echo here. Okay, goodbye. So comment, like, subscribe. Um, man, we got a lot more work to do. We're gonna do some power upgrades on this thing. We're gonna change out the ESC. We got some shock work to do, but I think now we know what to go do. So we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you for everything.